What if I told you the AI race we all think America is winning is quietly slipping away? Not because of a single blunder, but because dozens of small strategic moves have stacked up in China's favor. This isn't a conspiracy. It's a steady, state-led push. Talent, money, manufacturing, data, and policy. All moving together to build an ecosystem that can compete for the decades ahead. Over the next 12 minutes, I'm going to walk you through the facts, the quiet mechanisms, and the real consequences. So you can see why the balance of power in artificial intelligence is shifting. And what that means for technology, business, and geopolitics. To begin, it helps to remove the headlines and look at the infrastructure of power. Building world-class AI isn't just about a few breakthrough models or flashy demos. It's about three ingredients stacked together. Access to cutting-edge chips and fabs, a deep pool of experienced researchers and engineers, and large, high-quality datasets integrated into industry and government. China has deliberately tried to invest and coordinate across all three. Over the past two years, Beijing has deployed new state, funds and local investment vehicles dedicated to AI and foundational technologies. Multi-million, and now multi-billion dollar, programs designed to lock in industrial capacity and talent pipelines. Those funds are not cosmetic. They are targeted at building domestic compute, commercializing research, and pushing AI into manufacturing, healthcare, and public services. The scale and coordination of these programs let China convert policy into industrial reality faster than markets alone would allow. At the same time, Washington has leaned into export controls, trying to choke off the most advanced chips, software tools and equipment that underpin cutting-edge model training and deployment. These restrictions are blunt instruments. They can limit the fastest lanes of capability, but they also force technology bifurcation. The United States has tightened rules on AI-specialized chips and chip-making tool transfers, aiming to prevent easy access by state actors and restricted firms. That strategy has short-term power. It constrains certain suppliers and slows direct transfers. But it also has a predictable effect. It pushes targeted governments and companies to localize capability and find workarounds, often accelerating domestic alternatives. In other words, export controls can delay capability, but they also incentivize investments that reduce dependence on imports over the medium term. So that's the first dynamic, a two-sided chessboard where US controls try to limit transfer and Chinese industrial policy tries to substitute and scale domestic alternatives. The second dynamic is research and talent, the human capital that turns hardware into breakthrough systems. On paper, the US still produces a large number of high-impact AI models and hosts many leading labs. But the gap is narrowing dramatically. China's academic and industrial research output has surged. Publications, patents, and influential conference papers now come in volumes that rival, and in some measures surpass, Western outputs. More importantly, China is growing its in-country research institutions and labs that attract experienced researchers from abroad. Talent flows are no longer one way. Senior researchers who once moved to the US are now returning or choosing China because of ambitious labs, generous state and corporate funding, and access to large domestic datasets and deployment opportunities. That makes a difference. Real expertise combined with local scale means not just research papers, but production systems, industrial pilots and products. The data and deployment advantage. The true power of modern AI is not only models, but how those models are integrated into real economies. China has pursued an explicit AI plus approach, embedding machine learning across manufacturing, logistics, healthcare, and public services. That creates a feedback loop. Models trained on real operational data improve systems, which in turn generate more data and more value. When a country can run pilots at city or provincial scales, it gains practical experience that typical lab experiments can't replicate. The result is near-term advantage in certain application areas, supply chains, smart manufacturing, surveillance and urban infrastructure, where real deployments create insurmountable datasets and expertise. Those practical systems may not produce the flashiest papers, but they produce durable capability and economic leverage. Now consider the supply chain, chips, tools, and rare materials. The global semiconductor system is fragile and concentrated. A handful of companies control the most advanced nodes, specialized lithography equipment, and high bandwidth memory. The very components that accelerate AI training. The US has used that concentration as leverage, 
restricting exports, and pressuring allies to limit transfers. But China's response is predictable and strategic. Invest heavily in domestic production, secure alternative supply lines, and a tightened control over critical inputs where it already holds dominance, such as rare earths and certain processing stages. Recent moves to expand export controls and licensing requirements for strategic materials indicate Beijing understands the leverage these supply chains create, and it is using that leverage proactively. Over time, that reduces the U.S. advantage that came from exclusive access to certain hardware. Let's put these forces together into a simple chain of cause and effect. First, restricted access to top-tier chips slows Chinese model scale in the very short run. Second, China uses state capital and targeted industrial policy to build out domestic fabs, compute clusters and research funds, narrowing the hardware gap. Third, China integrates AI at scale into industry and government, creating massive operational data sets and deployment experience. Fourth, talent migrates and matures in China's labs, reinforcing the ability to turn research into production. Over time, these loops erode early US advantages in model scale and system deployment. This is not to say the U.S. is standing still, or that its private sector is not innovating aggressively. American companies still lead in foundational model design, cloud infrastructure, and the commercialization of advanced AI tools. U.S. cloud providers offer enormous training capacity, and firms like OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, and Microsoft continue to push architectural and alignment research forward. But the gap between research leadership and integrated national capability is widening in meaningful ways. The United States can still excel at creating research breakthroughs and commercial platforms, yet struggle to translate that into broad industrial adoption, where scale, government integration, and manufacturing matter. A crucial and often overlooked battleground is compute access and global distribution. Training the largest models requires concentrated pools of GPUs, HBM memory stacks, and global cloud capacity. When export controls carve up the world, Businesses and governments respond by reallocating demand, signing new deals, or building domestic compute. Recent patents show China pursuing both strategies, aggressive investment in domestic clusters and creative sourcing through third parties. At the same time, other regions, Europe, the Middle East, and parts of Asia, are trying to build their own sovereign compute capacity, sometimes as neutral alternatives between the US and China. The upshot is a multipolar compute landscape where the unilateral advantages of any single country are harder to sustain. Another battleground is standards and governance. Whoever defines norms, safety standards, and export regimes will shape how AI is built and deployed globally. China is not merely reacting. It is actively shaping technical standards, interoperability norms, and regional agreements for AI use. The European Union, with its AI Act and sovereignty push, is carving another path that emphasizes regulation and safety, but also the creation of an independent industrial base. These competing governance frameworks will determine not only market access, but who gets to set industry rules for years to come. That regulatory pluralism fragments the playing field and creates advantage for actors who align closely with each block's rules and procurement systems. Reuters, we should also talk about the financing model. The U.S. has historically led in venture capital and private investment for risky startups. But China's model mixes private venture with large, state-steered funds that can absorb risk over decades, even when immediate financial returns are slow. These funds funnel capital into infrastructure, fabs, data centers, and AI labs that private capital might avoid because of long timelines or low early margins. That patient capital, combined with government procurement, creates a long-run engine for capability that is hard to match with short-term market discipline alone. All of this accumulates into a strategic asymmetry. The United States retains leadership in certain technological layers, model design, top talent in many cases, and enormous private sector platforms. While China gains in systems integration, mass deployment, and strategic supply chain resilience, the result is a world where technological leadership is distributed and global influence depends on who can convert research into durable industrial control. What does this mean practically? For governments, it means rethinking policy. Export controls alone are insufficient. To maintain advantage, a comprehensive approach is needed. Invest in domestic manufacturing, broaden talent pipelines, secure supply lines for critical materials, and partner with allies on shared R&D and governance. For companies, it means diversifying sourcing 
investing in deployment capability in multiple markets, and preparing for a fragmented regulatory environment. For citizens, it means that the technologies shaping daily life, from healthcare algorithms to surveillance systems and financial models, will be developed in different ways, with differing priorities about privacy, control, and public benefit. There are, of course, limits and risks to China's approach. Rapid industrial pushes can lead to wasted investments, misallocated funding, and political interference that stifles innovation. Some recent analysis suggests that China's overall AI budgets, while large, still trail US private spending in absolute terms, and Chinese firms face harder profit margins in cloud services. Yet those critiques miss the strategic point. Scale, integration, and state backing create a different type of power, one that may not show up in quarterly earnings, but will matter in decades of industrial competition. Finally, the narrative that a single country will win the AI race is misleading. The future is likely multipolar, with different powers specializing in different capabilities. But if we define winning as translating AI breakthroughs into sustained economic, industrial, and geopolitical leverage, China's coordinated push means the United States can no longer assume automatic dominance. That calls for a sober strategy. Fortify the supply chain, invest in people and places, build trusted international coalitions, and adapt governance to both encourage innovation and protect shared security. To conclude, the US is not defeated, but the balance of advantage is shifting, quietly, persistently, and strategically. China's blend of targeted capital, integrated deployment, talent cultivation, and supply chain resilience has created a durable challenge. The test for policymakers and industry leaders now is not whether they can stop China from advancing, that is unlikely, but whether they can marshal the will and resources to compete on multiple fronts at scale. The stakes are enormous, economic power, national security, and the shape of the digital societies to come. As always, our goal is to bring you the facts and context so you can see what's happening beneath the headlines. If you want the links to the reports and articles that inform this analysis, check the description where I've compiled the most important sources. Until next time, Stay informed and keep looking past the noise.